Hey, it's Wendy Taywater. I'm back again. As promised, we were going to discuss how do I cope? Let's kind of look back to last year. COVID-19, financial crisis, loss of family and friends physically, emotionally, and sometimes spiritually. What happened? What were your original coping mechanisms? What did you do? Chances are you either took the information that was given to you, processed it through, and used it as an opportunity to do something different with your life, to participate in life more. We also had political divisions, racial unrest, so much going on. How do you cope? Others of you went towards drinking, drugs, suicidal ideations. You wanted to just end it. What's the worth what's the use in living if if the world is so horrible? I get that. So how do you cope? Did you take last year as an opportunity? to do something even greater with your life? Or did you give into addictions and negative thinking? Let's talk about it. The first step in getting past the things that happened last year was to make sure that you Recognize your feelings. Some of you may say, oh, Wendy, we've heard all this. This is a fluff piece. But let me tell you, I've been through some serious tragedies. I've lost, I've lost all of my family, except for my brother, two brothers. One, I don't even know where he is. The other one is stuck in addiction. But not the kind that you think, not drugs but addiction to anger, an addiction to rage. Yet he does a lot of good in the world because he channels it into a different direction. How do you cope? If you're in that deep, dark pit of despair or you think that life just isn't worth living, I want to take that journey with you. I'm pausing because I'm imagining looking into your eyes. Maybe you've fallen apart. Maybe you've sat in the shower crying. Maybe you've chosen to destroy everyone around you by being verbally abusive, by being angry, lashing out. Others of you have turned inward. You don't talk to anybody. You isolate. You've cut off social media. You've cut off any contact with the outside. How do you cope? There's a lot of activity in my house today, so forgive me that there's, you might hear dogs and you might hear um, running water and things like that. Things are continuing to move forward in the house. Um, but when I focus on those of you who have experienced that kind of pain where you're bent over, you're crying, and you feel like everything inside of you is falling, falling apart, you feel physical pain, you feel emotional pain, you feel the kind of pain that people don't normally recover from. Well, that's first step to recovery is understanding and accepting your pain. How do you cope? The first thing to do when you're in that dark place is to make sure that you take a moment to sort out all those feelings. Because when we're in that deep, dark place, the feelings are overwhelming us. We can't control them. Everything's fuzzy and, and lacks color and clarity and we can't deal with it.
We don't know what to do. We don't know how to act. So step one, acknowledge your feelings. And you're going to have more than one. You're going to have to take one by one each feeling and decide what you're going to do with it. Are you going to release it? Are you going to hold on to it? The gurus will tell you, take accountability for your life. I'm sorry. What if I'm a victim? What if the things that happened to me weren't even my fault? How are you going to tell me to take accountability? Other gurus say, oh, let's just have happy thoughts. Just have happy, positive thoughts. My mother just died yesterday. And my brother was killed in a car wreck. How am I supposed to just have happy thoughts? I'm reflecting you because I am you. I have been there. I understand that. And then you got the lady down the street who just wants to judge you based on what you look like. Or maybe you have friends that are undercover hating on you, being jealous of you, undermining you without you even knowing. How do I cope? Step one, acknowledge your feelings. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to be confused. It's okay to not know what to do. And you take that feeling. Some people say journal. We're in the time of information technology. Who has time to journal? But you can talk into a recorder how you feel. You can... Take one emotion and say, what am I feeling? Angry. About what? Last night. When Gerald said to me that I was too fat and I needed to lose weight. And then you take that one feeling and you go a little deeper. And you feel the feeling that came with it. Hmm, Maybe that made you a little sad. Maybe that hurt you. And you cry. You allow yourself to cry. There's only a few ways to get out emotions. The first one is by writing. The second one is speaking. Another way is through journaling. Another way is through physical activity. Anger usually requires physical activity to be released. How do you know this? Because when you're speaking and you're angry, you're exerting energy. So in order to do it in a positive way, you have to take that anger and put it into a physical activity. Walking fast, cleaning your house, whatever is necessary to get out that physical energy. Depression is generally an emotion that's turned inward. Sorry, I keep moving this because... <laughs> I'm having to hold this. <laughs> My computer um, is not as sharp as the phone, but your depression is anger turned inward. That's what the experts say. You're not expressing anything. You're taking everything in because maybe you're sensitive and you 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 have the the sadness of understanding and interpreting other people's feelings as your own. So what do you do to get out depression? Depression also requires energy, but I'm too tired. I, I don't have the energy. Well, the release of energy is different. It's not necessarily walking or um, putting into place uh, some sort of exercise routine or anything like that. Sometimes it is just as simple as listening to music. Listen to the sad music first. People will say, oh, get, get out of the depression. Just listen to the happy music. Everything's going to be great. No, I'm telling you, 
you have to process the feeling. So you listen to the sad music first. And then you listen to the happy music. Depression requires expression as well. The expression should also come in the form of writing in some cases. Write what you're proud of. Think back to all the things that you survived. Mm, mm, mm. There's been a lot. Think about all the people that you've helped. Think about all the good that you did in the world. And think about how your life made a difference. How your life changed somebody else's life. Even if it was just a smile and somebody was having a bad day and they said, you have a beautiful smile, thank you. That is changing someone's life for the day because you don't know what they went through you last night. If you find that you're having a hard time getting through the feelings, if you find that there are too many to talk about, there's too much to write down, and all you want to do is run around in your room in circles or tear something off the wall, guess what? That's understandable too. Nobody knows what you've been through. Nobody understands the pain that you've experienced. No one understands you like you do. It might be time to bring in an expert. So recognize your feelings. Process your feelings with some sort of action. If it's too much to process, there's too much pain, there's too much tragedy, you can't get through it by yourself, call in an expert. You can call me. And then you start using the word accountability. You have to make a decision. Do you want to live or do you want to die? It seems like a pretty harsh decision, doesn't it? If you want to live, it's going to take action. If you want to die, that takes neglect. If you're feeling like you want to die, call someone now. Someone you trust, not someone who's hurt you. Not someone you want to rekindle a relationship with. You call someone you trust and you tell them so you can get some help. But that's really what life is. Do I want to live or do I want to die? If you live, you have to do things that create life within you. You have to do actions that create movement. And that's why you have to be accountable. That's when you have to put certain things into place. You have to write in that journal. You have to commit to doing one thing at a time to pull yourself out of the pit. And what you need to understand most of all is that everyone has been in the pit. It may not seem like it. You might see that rich neighbor next door and think, well, they got a Mercedes. They got, they got vacations every year. You just don't know her husband's beating her every night and she's putting on makeup in the morning. Or maybe you're judging someone who's had hard times. Oh, he's a drug addict. He ain't got it going on. You know, if you're in that mode, hmm, maybe he was sexually abused by his father. Maybe he was beaten by his brothers. And the only way he could figure it out was to numb the pain through drugs sex and wandering 
Everybody has a story. So not only do you have to be accountable for your act, <clears throat> excuse me, your actions, pardon me, got a little choked up there because it hits a little close to home. But you also have to be accountable for your perceptions. How you view people. But that's just the next stage in coping. It really doesn't matter, the tragedy. It doesn't matter if it's COVID-19. It doesn't matter if it's because you're surviving a domestic violence situation. It doesn't matter if you're homeless and you have no place to go. It's the same process of digging yourself from the pit. These are the basics. There's a great author I like to listen to. <clears throat> Excuse me. His name is Joe Vitale. Joe Vitale's story is so interesting. He's a multimillionaire now. And um, he talks often about how he started out homeless. Just wandering in despair. And he had to do that mind trick of recognizing his feelings, processing them through, and ensuring that he started to take accountability for his life and his next steps. And sometimes you need a little help. I love the gurus who always tell their stories about what did it take? Uh, you know, oh yeah, I'm, I, I went through this, but now I'm a millionaire. Uh, you know, I wanna know, great, I'm glad you changed your mind. I'm glad you went through those steps, but can you explain to me how you went from the couch to the mansion? Well, I'm going to tell you because I was there. I had just left my first husband. I knew that when I left, I was going to be in poverty. And I traveled and I pretty much was a couch surfer for a good six months. The despair I felt was incredible. I felt like a failure. I couldn't understand why I couldn't make this work. I had already come from a dysfunctional background. That's a story for another day. But I already went through hell. And now I had a marriage that wasn't working. And now I had no money, not even a dime to my name. I was going to the food pantry. I was going from place to place. And I did things I'm not proud of during that time to survive. I believed the lies and the promises that people set for me that I was going to be okay because they were going to take care of me. But in the end, they only took care of themselves. I walked to work when I finally found a job because I had had my car repossessed. And I cried every night because I was so incredibly lonely and I missed my son. All I wanted was to see him every day. I thought about him every day, but it was three months before I actually talked to him. It was a very dark time. And one thing you're going to understand about me is I am a Christian, more like a Christ follower. And I know it gets a dirty vibe sometimes with the way people have handled themselves in the name of Christianity. I want to help get rid of those images too. But I remember I looked up to God and I said, I have already been through so much. How can I be here right now in this situation, in this time? How? How? I worked so hard and I did. I worked hard. And I was caring for other people. And yet that care didn't seem to go anywhere. Took care of my father, took care of my brother, took care of my mother, took care of my husband, took care of my son. And 
I was getting nothing. I was an empty shell. And I cried up to God. And I was like, please make the pain go away. And I started drinking a lot. I hadn't smoked dope in years. And here I was doing it again. But the good thing was, God heard my cry. The amazing thing was, there were random people put in my life. Randomly, I would get money. There was a lady who was at my church. And she saw everything I was going through. I had told my story in a lot more detail than what y'all are getting here. So she got the past and the present. And my goals for the future. And I lived in a house that was given to me by one of my suitors to live in. That I couldn't even pay for gas or anything. <laughs> it was an empty house that he left me in. And I had a car. That barely worked when I finally got one because that's all I could afford. $800 was it. And that I got from my mother because I had to do some repairs to it. But she agreed to let me have it. So did you get that? Got that from my mother. Was I invited to stay? No. What did my family tell me at that time? Well, you're in this position because you got divorced. You should have just stayed married. They knew what I went through. I have a secret that I hold from that relationship just so I can see my son, who's really my stepson. My in-laws thought that it was because of our differences in lifestyles and ambition, but it was due to a very disturbing series of events that occurred between us privately that I promised that as long as I get to see my son, as long as his parents were alive, they would never, ever know. And I've kept that promise to this day. Sometimes we do things we have to do to survive. So what was my journey from the couch to my own home? It was tears and prayers and the goodness of other people. But like I said about that woman, she knew about my story. She showed up at my empty house with a truck full of furniture. I hadn't slept on a bed in over a year. And I had one. Because of the kindness of someone else. But when you looked at me, when you saw me on the street, you thought, oh, she's lovely. She's got it together. She's always got a smile on her face. She's got it together. Lucky girl. No. I was going through a personal hell. So how do you cope? Recognize the feeling. Accept the feeling. Process the feeling. Take accountability. Because only you are going to be able to get yourself out of that situation. There's no prince to rescue you. There's no princess to rescue you. You have to rescue you. So how do you cope? One baby step at a time. Just one. Okay, folks. Until next time, our next series will be a bit more about how do I cope with family.
because we had a lot of loss of our families. What are we going to do in dealing with our family? So our next video will be about that. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. And take care of yourself and each other.